chapter number 10 is going to start talking about chemical reactions and chemical equations. And the thing is, what we're going to do is we're going to expand on what we did in chapter 8 and 9. Chapter 8 and 9, remember, you ended up writing chemical formulas. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to start taking those formulas and putting all of those substances together to form chemical reactions. A chemical reaction is just going to be the process by which the atoms of one or more substances are rearranged to form different substances. Chemical reactions are going to be created by the making or breaking of chemical bonds. And again, when we talk about those chemical bonds, we're talking both ionically and covalently. Now there's four signs that indicate whether a chemical reaction has taken place or not. Now this one's usually the least reliable but it's a color change. Again usually a color change does not just happen by itself. Usually you're going to have one of the other things uh, or one of the other signs going with it. Like I said if I have water and I add red food coloring to it it changes color but the thing is it's still going to be water. So again this is probably the least reliable but again it does exist. Number two is going to be bubbles or a gas is going to be given off. Number three is a precipitate. Precipitate, that's a solid that falls out of solution. And what I mean by that is if I take two liquids and I combine those liquids together, we get a solid that forms. And if I take that solid and I shake it around, you're going to find out that that solid will never ever dissolve. And that's a precipitate. And number four. Number four is going to be an energy change. And again, if you remember the two types of energy changes that we talked about, we're going to be endothermic, where energy is going to be put into the system, and then the other one's going to be exothermic, where energy is going to be given off by the chemical reaction. Chemical equations are going to help us represent what a chemical reaction is going to look like. The two parts of a chemical equation are going to be the reactants and the products. The reactants, that's your beginning materials. That's the left side of the chemical equation. And then that other one is going to be products. It's the substances that end up being formed and it is on the right side of the chemical equation. So when I'm talking about a chemical equation, you're going to see an arrow that separates that left side and that right side. Left side is going to be reactants, right side is going to end up being your products. Now scientists often want to know what state those reactants and those products are going to be in. Whether it is going to be a solid, a liquid, or a gas, or whether it is an aqueous solution that is reacting. The first one is going to be a solid. Okay, It's going to be represented by an S in parentheses. Second one is going to be a liquid, or a lowercase l in parentheses. G, G is going to be a gas. And then this last one here, AQ, that just means that it is dissolved in water. Now what I mean by this is if I take NaCl, okay, and we're talking about salt here, and I put an S there, that's the white stuff that you sprinkle on french fries. That's the stuff that is in a salt shaker. But if I take NaCl and I have this symbol, AQ, that AQ means that we've taken that salt, put it in water, stirred it around, and dissolved that salt. The thing is, the reason why we use AQ a lot of times is a lot of times uh, some sub substances are going to be in the solid state where they will not react. But when we put it in water, when we dissolve it in water, it's going to free those ions up. And once those ions are freed up, those ions are able to move around. And that's what causes the chemical reaction. A word equation versus a skeleton equation. A word equation is just as it states there. It's written out word for word for word. Example, solid iron reacts with chlorine gas to produce solid iron 3 chloride. Now the thing that I'm going to tell you about this is when we start writing or when we go to start writing the chemical equations the thing is you are going to still have to apply those rules. When I look there and I see iron 3 chloride I have to use the iron as plus 3, the chloride as minus 1 and I have to write correct chemical formulas. Correct chemical formulas will have to exist throughout this whole second semester. The skeleton equation, well that's now where we're going to put it into symbols so we don't have to write it out word for word. Okay, So this is going to be the writing of the chemical reaction with symbols. So when I start out solid iron, okay, Fe, and I go ahead and I put that S in parentheses, reacts with chlorine gas, Cl2, and that should be a G down there, it just kind of got uh, cut off by uh, where my PowerPoint is at. And then it says it produces, produces, that's a product, right side, solid iron 3 chloride and that proper chemical formula, FeCl3, again with that S in parentheses. I hope you noticed that chlorine, when you looked at chlorine, there was a Cl2. 
Now, again, that was an element by itself. Iron was by itself, too, but it was just listed as Fe. But one thing that we talked about already is we've talked about the diatomic 7. Again, any time you have a diatomic element, one of those 7, okay, remember, draw a 7 at number 7. You're missing one. Go to element number 1, which is hydrogen. It will always have to be written in its diatomic form. When I said solid iron, that was the element iron. But again, iron is not located along that 7, so it is just written as Fe. But I said chlorine gas, the element chlorine, it falls along that 7, so I have to write it as the Cl2. Balancing chemical equations. Remember, the word conservation means to save. What are we saving? In this case, we are going to be saving mass. We balance equations by changing an element or compound coefficient. Some of the steps for balancing chemical equations. Number one, write the chemical equation. Write that skeleton chemical equation. Number two, decide how many atoms of each element are on the reactant side. Number three, determine the number of atoms of each element now on the product side. And then number four, balance the chemical equation by changing the coefficients. Coefficients are going to be the large numbers that are going to be written out in front of an element or out in front of the entire compound. Never ever change a subscript. When you change a subscript, you're changing the complete identity of that compound. And then the last one, you'll never actually have to do this if you do it right the first time. But Reduce if you can. And what I mean is look at every single coefficient that you have written. Can I take an equal amount out of each one? If you don't have a number out in front of one of them, then the thing is that one is a designated one, so you can't take any more out of it. But reduce if you can. Finishing that original equation. Now, really, I did steps one, two, and three already. Okay. If you look here, there's no subscript, so there's one iron. When I look here, chlorine, there's a subscript 2, so I have two chlorines. Now I come over to the product side. There's no little subscript down here, so I have one iron. When I look here, I have three. That three just goes to the chlorine. When I look at this, my irons are already balanced. But the thing is, I have two chlorines on the left side, three chlorines on the right side. Common number between 2 and 3 is going to be 6. So I have to decide what times 2 is going to give me 6. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 3 out in front. 3 times 2, that gives me 6. Now over here, I've got a 3. Again, I have to decide what's going to give me 6. 3 times what? Well, I know that if I take 2 times 3, and again, notice this chlorine is within this compound. So I have to put that coefficient out in front of the iron. So now that 2 technically goes with the iron. So now I have 2 irons. 2 times 3 for the chlorine, I have 6 chlorines. Now my chlorines balance, but my irons are now off. 2 on the right side, 1 on the left side. So when I go ahead and put a 2 out in front, I now have 2 irons. This one is correctly balance. Now if you notice here, like I said, reduce if you can. Okay, I've got a 2 there. I've got a 2 there. But the thing is, I have a 3 there. And I can't take something evenly out of it. Remember, there are no partial particles. I cannot take 3 divided by 2 and put a 1 and a half there. Because that's like saying 1 and a half atoms. And we know that we can't have half particles. So just like I had written up before, 2, 3, and 2. Those are my coefficients. If we go ahead and look at this one, balancing chemical equations. This one looks a little bit longer, but again, remember what I said. Ag, no subscript, so there's one of them. Nitrogen, there's one of those. Now, here's the thing with oxygen. Look, there's three oxygens there. There's four oxygens over there, but they're separated by a plus symbol. Three plus four, seven. Hydrogen, subscript two, so I have two hydrogens, sulfur, nothing so there is a designated one. I always like to write my elements in the same order so I can look straight across. Again, going and looking, two silvers, nitrogen, one of those, oxygen, four there, three there, plus symbol in the middle so I've got seven. Hydrogen, one of them, sulfur, one of them. Now a hint that I often like to do is I often like to leave hydrogen and oxygen for the end. So I'm going to go ahead and start up top here. Silver 1, silver 2, so I'm going to go ahead and put a 2 out in front. So silver now becomes 2. The 2 goes to the nitrogen, so that's going to become 2. Now 
The two only goes to this oxygen right here because this one over here, this one over here is going to be separated by the plus symbol. So I'm going to take two times three. That's going to give me six. Six plus these four over here. That's going to give me 10. Okay, let's look here. Silver's okay. Nitrogen's off now. Got two on the left side, one on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and put a two out in front here. That two now goes to the hydrogen. So there's two of those. Two goes to the nitrogen. There's two of those. Okay, two goes to this oxygen only right here. So two times three gives me six. Six plus these four back here give me 10. When I look there, two silvers, two nitrogens, 10 oxygens, two hydrogens, and one sulfur. This one is balanced by just placing a two out in front there and a two out in front there. Again, I can't reduce anything out because there's nothing in front of either one of those compounds. And our last one, okay, C3H6 plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O. So C, H, and O. C, H, and O. Three carbons, six hydrogens, and two oxygens. Over on this side, one, two, and three. Now I'm going to start off how most of you probably would. You'd start off by placing a three out in front here. So again, that's going to go to three uh, carbons. Three times two, that's going to give me six plus one. That's going to give me seven oxygens. So let's see, we can balance a two and a six or a two and a seven. It's probably going to be easier to balance those hydrogens. So I'm going to go ahead and put a three out in front. And when I do that, three times two, that's going to give me six. Okay, three times one, that gives me three. But there's six of them back here. That's going to give me nine. Now here's the problem. Carbon's balanced. Hydrogen's balanced. Oxygen is unbalanced. But when you look at this oxygen here, any number times two, any number times two is going to give me an even number. And the thing is, when I started off initially here, I had that. And the thing is, remember what I said, any number times two is going to give me an even number. But when I add one in, when I add one in, that's going to give me an odd number. So if you ever run across something like that where it's giving you possibly or potentially that even on one side, not on the other. What I'll sometimes do is I'll just go ahead and start off by doubling one side. Okay? Because again, you notice we got the carbon initially balanced, we got the hydrogen initially balanced, but we were off with the oxygens. So what I started out doing is I'm going to go ahead and start now doubling this. So if I do that, that goes to 6, that goes to 12. Come over to the right side, I'm going to go ahead and put a 6 out in front there. Uh, 6 times 2 for the oxygen, that's 12, plus 1 over there, that gives me 13. Now again, I'm still odd right now. But, hydrogen, hydrogen's 12, hydrogen's 2. So I'm going to put a 6 out in front. But notice, the thing that's important about that is, last time we tried doing it, we put a 3. We put another odd number out in front. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting an even number. So hydrogen, 6 times 2, that gives me 12. Oxygen, 6 times 1, that gives me 6 here. 6 times 2, that gives me 12. 12 and 6, 18. Now I'm left with a 2 on the left side for oxygen, 18 on the right side. I'm going to go ahead and put a 9 out in front. 9 times 2 gives me 18. So the coefficients on this are 2C3H6 plus 9O2 produces 6CO2 plus 6 H2O.